So this is a quick video about the Dr. Prepare battery that I just reviewed. One of my viewers got an email from the company and I wanna go through some of these points. So this is what they say, dear value customer, Thank you for supporting Dr. Prepare. Dr. Prepare has received emails from some guests experiencing some confusion about the low temperature protection of the battery. So we would like to explain this to every customer here. We saw the video that Will Prowse used a chainsaw to disassemble the battery in edited parts of the process. It is impossible for our wires to be exposed to the outside. You can watch it again. And yes, that's true. This is not being exposed to the outside because it's in a plastic box. I mean, that's pretty obvious. So let's assume they have bad English and they're talking about where the wire was pressed inside the case because they think that my chainsaw cut this insulation and that is not true. So we're gonna make this as clear as possible for them. So what actually happened is during assembly, when they were putting the top cover on, this part of the wire was smashed between the case in the top cover. And you can see there is glue on this insulation. How did this glue get here? Because it was smashed where this spot is where they glued it. And you can actually see pieces of wire inside of the case. So we're gonna zoom in so that the company can clearly see this. And do you see it poking out right there? That's the wire that was smashed between these two parts of the case. And you can see that the glue broke off because that was glued to the wire. And that is the glue. So yes, this got smashed by your assembly process. It was not me. Also, let's look at the other side. I never touched this side. And see how this was fractured? So this is when I ripped the battery apart. Okay, so this never touched a saw blade or an oscillation tool at all. And there's still insulation right here. There's rubber. Anyways, let's move on to the next thing that they said in their email. So the next part, our lithium iron phosphate batteries do not have low temperature protection. Low temperature protection is that under the monitoring of BMS temperature sensor. The battery will stop charging during 23 to 32. Okay, wait a second. You guys say that you do not have it. That is specifically what you stated. And now you say that the BMS temperature sensor does have it. Well, I took apart the BMS to see if you have a temperature sensor and I can't find it. And guess what? There's a spot where this over temperature sensor is supposed to go. And you guys did not use that. You actually took the over temperature sensor that's supposed to be used on the parallel bank of FETs and you put it on the cells. That is illogical and completely unnecessary. And reading the email further, it says the battery will reach negative F only when the outdoor temperature is lower to negative 40 or negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit, which means that the power will be completely shut off when emergencies or snowstorms happen. But with our batteries, there is no problem to be used at low temperatures? Really? Lithium iron phosphate batteries can be used at low temperatures now? When did this happen? To be fair, there are Winston cells that can be cycled at very low temperatures, um, but those are very different. These are not Winston cells. Next paragraph, the built-in BMS on our batteries focuses on high temperature protection. If the lithium iron phosphate battery exceeds 60 degrees Celsius, there is a risk of high temperature in the battery, which may cause sparks, really? It will cause sparks because it's getting too hot. That's very strange. Therefore, we have two built-in high temperature detection sensors. One is inside the heat dissipation aluminum plate or the heat sink that was on top of the BMS, which is not true. I just ripped it apart and there's a spot where it should be. And guess what? It's not, it's not there. Look it, this is supposed to go here. This is not supposed to go on the cells. You have one temperature sending unit, not two. And then they say that the other one is attached to the battery to ensure that the temperature of the two main components is within safe range. So it is true that the high temp sensor is on the cells, um, but you need low temperature charging protection. You say that it's not an issue, but it is an issue. And it's so funny because I have the same exact BMS right here. And this one was assembled properly. So check it out, we have a temperature sensor for the cells, and we have a high temp sensor for the MOSFETs. Does this one have those? No, it does not. This was misplaced, so whoever's assembling your batteries is doing a bad job, and there is no temperature sensor attached to the board when it should be. Something else I noticed is that these BMSs have different MOSFETs. I found the data sheet for these ones, and these can handle a higher voltage, so you can safely string these together up to 48 volts. 
This one, I inputted both numbers in Google and I can't seem to find a data sheet. So they might be using cheaper ones. Um, that's just an assumption, I do not know. But yeah, I cannot seem to find the data sheet for this uh, FET. So yeah, in my opinion, I would avoid this battery like the plague. If you want to know what I currently recommend, I mean, I have a lot of videos, but if you want to see what I like right now and which has actually passed my test, please check out my website. It's mobile-solarpower.com. I never really mention it because I put it in the description below, but um, I had so many comments of people asking what they should be buying. Um, and everything on that site I've either used for years or I've tested to no end and it works fantastically. So yeah, please check out the website if you want to know what to actually buy. But yeah, this is not acceptable. Even the Ampere Time, which is about the same price, has a better build quality than this. But if you use this BMS with good components like the, the, the Wii's battery or Y's battery, this thing's great. But yeah, um, it's not that great when you don't know how to put it together. So anyways, I will talk to you guys in the next video and thank you so much for watching. Bye.